Now, uh, I have this metal conducting plate here, right? And it has got electrons, you can see, and fixed positive ions, and it's a neutral conductor, all right? Now, what I want to do is, I want to apply an electrical force on it and push some charges inside. And what I'm doing by pushing these charges, I'm doing work in pushing these charges, right? And I'm storing energy in the form of electrical potential energy. The same thing you do when you compress a spring, right? You store the mechanical potential energy. The same thing I'm doing over here. But the problem is, if the force which I'm applying is a constant force, that's the only force which I've got. Now, if I'm applying that force and I'm pushing electrons, I'm doing work, everything is fine. After some time, all these electrons will jam up, right? They'll start repelling each other and they'll start rebelling against the force which I'm applying, right? They'll apply a force opposite to the direction of the force which I'm applying. Because of which I would be able to store only so much charge, right? I won't be able to store a lot amount of charge in this and the more amount of charge I can store, the more is the energy I'm storing and the more is my purpose being fulfilled. So what can I do? One thing I can do is I can increase that force, but let's let's be under the condition that we can't increase that force. Let's say that the force which are applying is a constant. What else I can do? What, what could be a simple solution to this? A very simple solution to this could be bringing another metal conducting plate. And this is a neutral again, but because this is charged and this is negatively charged because we have pushed electrons into it, this guy will repel the electrons of this guy and all the electrons will push far and this will become a positively charged plate. So what's the point and what's the use? The use is the positively charged plate now will hold the electrons of the negatively charged plate because of which with the same force I'll be able to push even more electrons inside this plate, right? And because I'm pushing more electrons, more electrons will go out from here. So as a result, just by bringing this another metal conducting plate here, I'm able to store more charge. I'm able to do more work in storing that charge and I'm thus storing more energy into this setup, right? So this setup where you push electrons on one plate and get an equal number of electrons pushed away from the other plate, this plate getting a negatively charged, the other plate getting a positively charged. This setup of two parallel conducting plates kept close together is called a parallel plate capacitor. Are you going to see this a lot in this chapter? So now I want to discuss with you the crux of this whole chapter. If you understand this one idea, you know this entire chapter revolves around this one very basic idea, okay? The question is this. I told you in the beginning of this chapter that we are trying to make these things called capacitors to store energy, right? But you must have seen that in all the things which we discussed, we are very much obsessed with charging the capacitors, right? We want to put more and more charge in it. So what has charging got to do with energy? That's the question which popped up in my head when I was learning capacitors for the first time. What does it do? So think about this. When you have a spring and when you compress that spring, what you're doing actually is you're storing your, the work which you're doing in the form of mechanical potential energy, right? The same way when you have a conductor or a set of conductors, the more charge you're putting them, the more work you're doing to do that, right? So let's say you put some charge Q. Then after that, you're putting some more charge, say Q dash. So that Q charge will be repelling and all those things we have discussed in electrostatics, right? So you'd be doing more and more work as you're putting these charges in the conductor. And what's happening to the work which you're doing it is getting stored in the form of electrical energy. And that's why we are obsessed with charging conductors or capacitors, right? The more we charge them, the more energy we are giving them. Now think about this. If there's a capacitor which only has like a limitation to what extent it can get charged. Now, that is the maximum amount of work I can do against it, right? That is the maximum amount of energy I can store in it. Now, if I have another conductor in which a more amount of charge can be stored, it means that I can do more amount of work and hence store more amount of energy in that conductor or capacitor, isn't it? So, the more a conductor or a capacitor can hold charge, the more energy it can store, right? And given that our purpose of making capacitors is to store more and more energy and then get that energy delivered as fast as possible, it is better if a capacitor can get charged more, right? And that's why capacitance of a conductor is just its ability to store charge. The more capacitance it has, it means the more charge it can store. 